Hi everyone! In this part, we're going to talk about states in the Kernel Transaction Manager. We're going to see how the transactions states evolve over time and how the enlistment states need to synchronize together so the actual transactions evolve as well. We're going to look into the API in New Zealand that allows you to get notifications about the different state changes. We are going to look into the superior enlistments and how they impact the APIs that you can use from New Zealand. And finally, we'll talk more about the rollback and recovery and what APIs you can use from New Zealand to trigger these behaviors. Okay, let's get started. So the states in KTM are very important in general. Basically, a transaction won't be completed until all of the enlistments have been in the committed state. So even though one enlistment can be committed and is a candidate for being freed, the transaction is not actually finished and committed itself until all the workers have committed to the work that they did. And basically, the states, when you start out, is called pre-preparing. And when all the enlistments have reached the pre-prepared state, the transaction itself transitions to the pre-prepared state as well. And then all the enlistments become in the preparing state. And when they are all done, that is to say they are all prepared, the, the transaction also becomes prepared. And again, when all the enlistments become in the committed state, the transactions also is finally actually committed. This can be fairly confusing at first because the naming is a little bit weird and it is not that well documented, but you can basically work it out by playing with the APIs using the notification queue to see what state transitions are happening. Because at first, it may not be clear that all of the enlistments need to synchronize across states to cause the state changes. So reversing and poking around the APIs kind of help with that. Fortunately, all of the states that enlistments go through are documented publicly into an enum called K enlistment state. And yeah, so basically when you have the enlistments transitioning into states, the state changes result in notification being queued into that notification queue associated with the resource manager. And whether or not the notification will actually be queued for the enlistment is dictated based on a mask called notification mask field that was passed to the create enlistment function when you actually created the enlistment in the first place. And it basically says, I am interested in these types of state changes for this enlistment or not. And so by playing around this, with this mask, you can find out sort of the best mask to use to receive as many notifications as possible. So you can see what is actually happening in KTM from New Zealand. And so there is this user and API called get notification resource manager, which lets you just get notification information from the resource manager. And it tells you exactly about the state changes. And it gives you that information in a structure called transaction notification, which is publicly documented. Interestingly and confusingly, the maximum mask that is documented on the MSDN is 3FFFFFF. And if you pass that mask value to the API, it doesn't work and the enlistment is not created at all. So we had to reverse engineer the functionality in the kernel to find the exact sort of value that is that includes all possible notification because basically we wanted to get as many notifications as possible and the value was different from the mask that was specified by Microsoft publicly on the MSDN. So it's not that important, but I guess the main takeaway is don't be surprised if when you're playing around with kernel components and stuff, the documentation is not correct and always trust Ida or Ghidra or Windbag as they will tell you the real truth. And so this is the code in kernel in KTM that checks the notification mask. And so we need to pass all these checks to return true at the end of the function. So the mask is considered valid. And in particular, there is a check against this value 0x6000f0 that we need to pass. And so if you do the math, the end result we found through reversing is that passing the notification mask value of 0x39fff0f actually allows us to get all the notifications and still pass the little sanity checks from the previous slide. So another thing is there is this concept of superior enlistments, which was kind of confusing at first. And it seems to be used on distributed systems for transactions that have enlistments across multiple systems. At first, because of confusing API names, 
we were doing everything using superior enlistments without even realizing it. But the problem is there are certain things you can't do with superior enlistments. And so we ended up with all these weird errors and it turned out we had to not use superior enlistments to trigger the bug. But again, this is the, the type of things that playing around will teach you. And yeah, so we said we wanted to transition state for enlistments, like make the enlistment move from pre-prepared, prepared, and so on until committed. And some API names that exist are pre-prepare enlistment, prepare enlistment, commit enlistment. So we thought, yeah, sure. These must be the APIs we want to use, right? But it turns out the ones with enlistments at the end in the name, like commit enlistment, are for superior enlistments, which severely limit what you can do. So actually the ones you want to use are the ones with complete at the end of the name, like pre-prepare complete, prepare complete, or commit complete. So yeah, again, trial and error taught us this type of thing. This is basically a summary of the functions we want to use on the left column in order to transition from one state to another for non-superior enlistments. And we want to avoid using the ones on the right column, which are specific to superior enlistments. So I mentioned in a previous video the concept of rollback. And so rollback is if a transaction is aborted because something goes wrong, so KTM will just revert the entire transaction. And so it initiates that rollback. You can typically call the rollback transaction function from userland. I also mentioned the concept of a recovery. This is interesting to us because again, the vulnerable function in KTM we want to analyze is called TM Recover Resource Manager, EXT. And there is this API in New Zealand called Recover Resource Manager, which you can guess might end up calling TM Recover Resource Manager EXT in the kernel. And basically the documentation states that if a transaction is in a state that sort of fails or temporarily interrupts, but is in a way that it recovers. And one example is that a resource manager goes down and then it comes back up. You can recover the resource manager and all of the enlistments associated with it can be resynchronized on a state and then it is in a recovered state and you can continue without aborting the transaction and having to roll back.